You know, for me, my decision really thought about where I have to improve as a player, like you said. So to answer your question, you know, my pass rushing ability is a big aspect that, you know, I'm trying to tackle day in and day out so I can be the best player I can be. And also, you know, I, I like the, and I love the direction of this team right now. Um, you know, we're going into our third year with this staff and, you know, we're turning in the right direction. With, with the pass rush stuff, how do you how do you go about getting getting better in that department? Is it changing things you do in the weight room, things you do conditioning wise? Is it simply mm -hmm. working on technique? How, how do you how do you kind of look at it? You know, I think it's really a combination of all those things. You know, just to start my conditioning, you know, be able to play multiple downs, you know, besides first and second down, and like you said, technique. That's also a big part of it as well. But there's, there's a lot more aspects such as watching film. You know, really understanding who I am as a player. Gotcha. Did, did you did you change your body at all? I mean, you you, you look uh, you look a little thinner in the face. Yeah. So my body weight dropped down to 305. So right now my range is between 305 and 310. Uh, dropped a little body fat as well this off season. So I think it's been a pretty productive off season for me. Gotcha. Yep. Hi, Jameer. Um, first, congrats on the wedding. I yep. think you're, you got married since the last time yep. we saw you. January 11th. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so when did you actually make the decision to stay at Virginia? Was it really close to the end of the season? Was it something that you thought about during the year? I was actually after our last game of the season. You know, I took some time to talk with my family, you know, those few weeks in December. And, you know, I made the decision to come back. You know, I think it was the best move for me and my family. And, and now... Uh, Tony Elliott mentioned when we talked about yesterday on Tuesday that this is the first true off season that these coaches had going into the spring. Have you noticed a difference this spring practice than the previous two? Yeah, you know, I think overall there's a lot more, you know, buy-in, a commitment level. Like you said, we see the coaches a lot more now since, the, you know, this is our first full off season all together. And, you know, I think it was a really productive off season, like I said earlier. So we're just trending in the right direction right now. What are some of the main takeaways that you've personally seen in this last offseason? What were some of the big changes? Uh, you know, I think the biggest thing is competition, right? We have a lot of a lot of new guys on the team, you know, a lot of grad transfers, and young guys as well that's been in the program, you know, that's trying to earn a spot. So I think, you know, our competition amongst each other has raised a lot. And some of those new guys, you know, Aaron's not going to be next yep. to you on the field, which is going to be different for you. Who are some of the guys who you've seen kind of step up or kind of feel like they've taken some strides? Yeah, yeah you're right. You know, I think uh, Michael Diada and Jason Hammond, you know, those guys are competing, you know, their tails off every day. Because, like you said, Aaron's not here. You know, so we're all competing within this, you know, the deep tackle room to be the best we can be. Yeah, kind of going off of Jackie's wedding comment, you got married, and then I saw you started a business, too. Can you kind of talk about um, yep. your sports consulting endeavor and, and where that came from? Yeah, so I started my business called JC Sports Consulting. You know, and for me, the purpose of it was to mentor, you know, young athletes, you know, especially high school kids that's in the process right now of, you know, trying to go to college and try to figure out what should they be working on, you know, how does this work, how does that work? So, you know, that's really the whole, you know, gist of my business. You know, I try to mentor and touch as many kids as I can in a positive way. Yeah, and so, okay, husband now, football player, business owner, yeah. how do you juggle all of these things you've going on? Yeah, you know, I think for me is important to, you know, compartmentalize. You know, when it's time for football, you know, I'm 100% locked in on football. And, you know, nothing else on my mind. When I go home, you know, with my wife, you know, I'm locked in there, so. I try, I try my best to, you know, separate, you know, every section of my life. Yeah, I feel like the closest guy that you would have to the situation that you're in now would be Matt Ganyard. Did you talk to him any about, uh, or or maybe Famui, uh, about any of any of this? You know, I did, you know, you know especially being married. Um, you know, I, was, I really wanted to know how is it that they could come in every day, you know, and still focus on football. Because you probably imagine we have so many things going on in your life. It could be real easy to start focusing on the wrong thing at the wrong time. You know, so those are some tips I learned. Yeah, thank you. To, to, to go back to the, the pass rushing stuff, is there NFL guys that you, you find yourself watching 
uh, interior guys that, that maybe you take something from and, and try to apply to your game? Yeah, so, you know, for me, I watch a lot of bigger guys. So guys like Dexter Lawrence, you know, I love watching this tape. He uses a lot of power in this pass rush. Uh, you know, I watch guys that are a little bit more twitchy, like Grady Jarrett. So, you know, I try to mix up my game overall and try to take, you know, bits and pieces from everybody and apply it to who I am. Do you have a number of, of sacks in mind that, that would make you happy come, come fall? I, I do not have a number, but the goal is to have at least one a game. So, okay. yeah, so one a game. So if we play 12 games or more, it'll be, it'll be 12 sacks a season, plus you, any more. Uh, you'd shoot up some draft boards if that happens. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and then, and just to just to go back to some of the younger guys, um, what do you think the value was for them getting reps last year behind you and Aaron, right? Uh, Hammond, Diada, and and even Anthony Britton played a little bit yep. last year. And what, what do you think the value is for for young guys to play? You, you were a young guy. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Too. You know, I I think it's crucial because when I think back, you know, to my first year in 2020 with COVID, uh, you know, I was taking snaps, you know, as a young guy. And that was that was crucial for my development, you know, fast forward five years later, just because you finally start to understand, you know, the tempo of the game, you know, how everything picks up in the next level. So when you go into the off season, you know, like like you said, the young guys are in right now, you know, they have an idea of what, you know, what to expect and, you know, game speed, tempo. Yep. Um, and then Tyler Simmons, he's a, a freshman. Um, so with, with him, have you been able to kind of chat with him when, since uh, he came in the recruiting thing? What was your initial impression of him? Uh, you know, I haven't had a chance to talk to him yet directly. You know, but I've heard great things, and I'm excited, you know, to get him here this, this summer. You know, he, he's going to be, I think he's going to be a great addition uh, to the group, and it's just going to raise our competition level as we get ready for our fall in the season. Did you get any feedback from an NFL scouts during the offseason at all? Uh, yeah, I got a few. I think for the most part, like you said, a big emphasis is just, you know, working in on things that they're really small, you know, yeah. that I can, you know, keep developing that. What do you, what do you think a, a healthy Chico Bennett could do for, for your D-line? I think, you know, I think he could be a really dominant player. You know, I think he's already shown it too. You know, especially that, that 2022 season. Um, like you said, you know, injuries, you know, they're part of the game. And, you know, they can hinder all of us if, if it's, you know, presented to us. But like you said, I think, you know, all of us healthy, especially Chico, it can just add to our defense and our D-line room. And then just, uh, just on the defense collectively, it seems like you've got pretty good leadership at, at all different levels mm -hmm. of defense. Uh, how, how does that help you guys collectively make the improvements you want to make uh, for, from last from last season to yep. this coming season? You know, I think we have a lot of older guys from from the D-line room. You know, me, Chico, Cam Butler, you know, yeah. so with Michael Diada to the linebacker room, James Jackson. And, you know, in the secondary as well with Jonas. And, you know, the uh, few grad guys we brought in with Corey, you know, guys like that. I think as a... As a defense overall, it really helps our game because, you know, we understand, you know, what is needed day in and day out, you know, to achieve what we need to achieve, you know, because we've done it, you know, for so many years.